This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. How would you like to get more customers, make more profits, and have bigger breakthroughs? Get Doberman Dan's Profit Boosting Breakthroughs. Normally, this would cost you $98 per month. But right now, for listening to this show, he's giving you a free copy of his Doberman Dan letter. All you have to do is go to DobermanDan.com and sign up to get your free copy now. Prepare yourself for the uncensored. Nothing held back. No BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. Welcome back, boys and girls, to another edition of Off the Chain with your man, Doberman Dan. Dan, I got a question. Do any females listen to this show? Highly doubt it. I, <laughs> <laughs> Doberman Dan doesn't seem to attract females. He seems to repel them. Now, I take it back. I've I've had some... Some really nice ladies tell me that they they listen to the podcast. So, yes, I haven't repelled all the women listeners. All right. Well, that, that's good, then, because I thought I might have to re-record that intro. Now, let's get down to business, Dan. You were at a GKIC event. You were speaking, and I heard that you were mobbed by fans of the podcast show. Is that true? That is true. Uh, that was... <laughs> And well, it, it depends on how you want to define mob. So (laughs) can we call, can we call like a group of eight people a mob? Sure. No, seriously. I, I'm just offhand. I'm thinking at least eight or 10 people commented on the, on the podcast, how much they enjoy it. So it's nice to know, man. I mean, we, we like sit behind a microphone here and do this thing. And I mean, we've gotten some good reviews on iTunes, but it ain't the same as hearing it from the horse's mouth. So I really appreciate it when when a listener comes up and tell me they 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 enjoy the podcast or they talk about one particular episode. Yeah, it was exciting. Very cool, Dan. And were you expecting that? Did you think people were listening, especially at such a high level event? I had hoped they were listening. <laughs> So, you know, the um, reason I'm asking is, was it more or less people than you thought were going to come up to you? Were you going in there like, yeah, they're going to know me? <laughs> I, you know, I, I never I never assume that anybody is going to know me. But, yeah, I was I was actually pretty surprised. I mean, everybody knew me. And of course, Nick Luisi and the whole GKIC team have been promoting me and Dan Kennedy and that helped, but a lot of people knew me from the blog and the podcast. So yeah, wow. it's it's super encouraging, man. I mean, this this geeky introvert writer podcaster. I you know I'm I live in an underground bunker guarded by a fifty caliber machine gun. So I you know to interact with human beings and then tell me that they enjoy this thing that I'm doing. That was pretty cool. Oh wow, here comes Guru Dumb. Don't let your head get too big, Dan. So what do you have in store for us today? Here's what I have in store for us. Yeah, something, something very sparkly. Yeah, (laughs) definitely, definitely sparkly. Yeah. You ever ever see the movie Rain Man? Definitely, definitely. Got to go to Kmart. (laughs) Kmart sucks, Rain Man. Yeah, cool movie. But I was thinking about it the other day and uh, I realized that I've got like a bit of this Rain Man thing going on. It's actually, I'm starting to call it the Rain Man secret of success. The thing that he and I have in common is the, yeah, Wapner's on at five. Yeah, five o'clock, Judge Wapner. And, uh, you know, except my deal is, yeah, it's 8 a.m. Yeah, writing time at 8 a.m. Definitely writing time. (laughs) It's so... I'm such I've, I'm such a geek about this. I've had to become uh, a really jealous with my time and just stick to this routine, probably because, you know, I can be one lazy bastard if allowed to be. So I can't allow myself to be. So I've got a routine and I stick to it pretty regularly. I mean, I backslide sometimes, but I, I'm getting to be kind of militant about it because it's the, I was going to say, it's the only thing I control, control. Maybe not the (laughs) only thing, 
I mean, I'm still young enough that I can control my bladder and my bowel still, but it's, it's like probably one of the only things I can control. I, I can't control results or outcome of the things I do. Although as much as I'd like to believe I can, I really can't. <laughs> but my routine is something I can control. And when I control that, it's, it's the big contributing factor to determining results or, or outcome. And so I've been, I've been pretty good at that, but I guess not good enough because I've had a pretty recent epiphany about the routine. And, and that is, in addition to sticking to the writing routine, I've got to limit my access. I've, I've got to limit, I should say, limit access to me. Mm. Because when looking back over my schedule, when I had the best of intentions and, you know, decide, you know, yeah, writing time at eight o'clock, definitely eight o'clock. And then, but when I allow too many people or the wrong people <laughs> to have access to me, which nobody has access to me in person practically, because I, you know, like I said, I live in the underground bunker, but either via phone or email, email is, is the, is the biggest sin access to me by email. It, it just, the routine, it's so easy to let the routine, the routine go like, eh, I'll answer this real quick or I'll take this phone call real quick. And so that's been my recent epiphany. The way that I can do a better job sticking to my routine is much more limited access to me. So my point here's here's what I'm talking about. I set appointments with myself and this is how I keep the routine and I'm doing that for what I call my 20% activities, which for me is usually product development and creating copy and stuff like that. And mostly those two things, actually, I mean, that's, and writing is a big part of it. Writing, you know, makes this world of Doberman Dan go around. So in addition to limiting access to moi, I'm figuring out better ways to delegate the 80% or, or just not do it at all. <laughs> mm. it, it, it's amazing when some of that 80% activities, when you just ignore it, it goes away or somehow it takes care of itself. But the, the key to me pulling that off is, is making access to me extremely limited. Like at this point, I've got a couple commitments that are limited time commitments that I'm, I'm of course going to honor, but when those are done, the only people who are going to have access to me via email and phone are my gold mastermind peeps. So, so these are people who pay me $24,000 a year to have access to my demented brain. And we meet three times a year for two days each. And so the keeping the routine was a great idea initially. And it worked to a point, but where it just kept going off the rails was too much access to me and, and that constantly throwing off the routine. If that, if that makes sense, Joe Nathan. <laughs> so I'm wondering how far you're going to go with this, because I already felt like I was frozen out when I got sent to your support system. Are we going to have to fax you and then the fax is going to go to your system for approval before it gets to you? Are you going that far with it? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm taking it even further. So fax is even too modern. And so is the postal service. I'm going back to Pony Express. The only way you can get a message to me is via Pony Express. <laughs> no. <laughs> smoke signals. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, smoke signals. No, the, the Colombiana, my wife, is the one who's been busting my chops about this. And I just kind of ignored her because, you know, I'm a nice guy. I, I want to give people time and I don't want to ignore people, but the more I kept looking at it and the more I kept thinking, you know, this, this rain man secret of success, I know it works when I do it, but the thing that's screwing it up is just me not being as protective of my time as I need to be. And she's like, well, duh, I've been telling you that for like probably three years. <laughs> Told so, you so. <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> So that's, that's been the big epiphany. The, you know, all this is to guard my time so I can keep to this schedule of stuff that creates my ideal life. 
because when I don't keep to that schedule, things start to slip and then life starts to suck and stuff isn't getting done that should get done. I mean, you know, I love you, but I guess I'm the victim of my own success here. I can't love a couple hundred people vying for my attention all the time via email and phone. So that's been my my big epiphany to the Rain Man secret of success. Yeah, having a routine works and scheduling appointments with yourself to get stuff done. But as long as you're not limiting access to you and, and you keep getting involved in the 80 percent to the point you can't do your 20 percent, it just totally goes off the rails. So that's my big epiphany on how to make the Rain Man secret of success work in your life. So now let me ask you some some stuff here. I want to go a little bit deeper with you. You're doing the guru thing a little bit. You're speaking on big stages. You have high dollar masterminds. And when you talk about limiting access to you, which, by the way, I agree with 100 percent, does that affect your celebrity in any way? Does that affect your ability to reach a new audience? Tell, tell me more about that. Well, that's very observant of you. So <laughs> celebrity, I still find that funny. But yeah, you know, how do I say this without sounding like a dick? <laughs> um, I can't wait. <laughs> This is another thing that the Columbiana has been busting my chops about. You know, the the celebrity authority doesn't hang with the guys. He doesn't become one of the guys because how are you going to keep the celebrity authority position when you keep lowering yourself to one of the guys? Oh, elitist. So here's here's what I've discovered. Well, let's look at let's let's look at copywriting. So there are copywriters. I had this discussion with Dan Kennedy at the Info Summit a few days ago. There are copywriters who have been doing their thing for 30 years, but yet you see their ads every month in trade magazines offering free critiques or free strategy sessions. And their fee structure is a lot lower than the consultants who have made the sacrifices and done the work to do all the things that create the celebrity authority positioning. For example, Jay Abraham. Jay Abraham doesn't hang with the boys. All right. So he's created a celebrity about him. Jay Abraham's fees are astronomical. And, you know, the dude is super smart. He knows his stuff. There are equally smart consultants and copywriters who've not done the work that Jay has done to create that celebrity. And they're going to events and hanging with the boys and their fees are maybe 1% of Jay Abraham's. So that was also part of the realization. I mean, just the, the routine getting off track and, and me getting too involved in, in the 80% stuff in phone calls that you know, and interactions instead of concentrating on my 20% activities that really create this ideal life that I've been working on creating for two decades. But that was another big realization too, that, you know, when you have a certain positioning, you got to do things to protect that positioning. Wow. And I'm just thinking about a discussion we had a few weeks back, maybe a month or two back, where I asked you if you were going to an event, and that's exactly what you told me. You said, they didn't invite me to speak. I am not going. You would not hang out with us commoners on the floor. You had to be up on the stage. And and I get it, man. It makes sense. (laughs) The commoners. Well, I've gone to a lot of events over the past 20 or so years. And so now... When I go to an event, I'm I'm going there to be paid to be a presenter. And any freelancer or any service provider who wants to make the maximum fees for the thing they do should probably observe this process really closely. No doubt. I feel, I don't know. I see some guys like even one of our friends. Ben Settle, who to me, he seems quite accessible on Facebook, almost more accessible than he pretends to be. And yet he keeps growing and growing audience keeps getting bigger and it works for him. 
But for me, I can't stand people. And I want to be far away from most of them. <laughs> and I don't know if that's hurting me or making me more desirable. But I, I kind of like, and you know what, Dan, for you, you're an introvert. So this is perfect anyways, right? You don't even have to socialize. You just focus on your 20%. Well, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of people who do this kind of stuff are introverts. And this is all this stuff is really outside of our comfort zone. Exactly what I'm doing now is outside my comfort zone. Speaking at events is outside my comfort zone. Being around groups of people. You know, where I have to be, you know, on, I always have to be, Hey, how you do? I can't, I can't ever have a down day. You know, that's <laughs> totally outside my comfort zone. I'd rather just stay at home with my dog, you know, but it's a means to an end, you know, and it, it will get to a point, I believe for Ben, he'll grow to the point where he just simply, it's going to drive him insane. It's going to ruin his life, him being too accessible. And he's just going to have to limit access. I mean, it got to the point for me last year where I was physically sick because of it. Because, dude, you can't keep up a 16 hour a day schedule every day for a long time without it, you know, it taking its toll. And when I looked at those 16 hour days, I'm realizing, my God, most of this is being burned up in those 80% activities and me being too nice of a guy of just wanting to answer questions and help people out. And, you know, you know, I should be helping out my family. That's, yeah. that's the ones I have a commitment to. And so therefore I'm, I'm going to be probably some people are going to think I'm a dick. Well, this is for survival purposes, you know, at this point. I'm I'm not in this business to be a nice guy and make friends. You know, I'm in this business to work as little as possible while making the maximum income possible so that I can have this ideal life that I've worked so damn hard to create. <laughs> so, you know, although it sounds very arrogant, I, this is a good study for anybody who does this kind of stuff that I do. They should really take a look at this. Because eventually it'll get to the point where you have so many people tugging at your shirt sleeve that you just can't, you can't, you can't deal with it. And second of all, your income is going to take a big hit if you don't deal with it and limit access to you. Because, listen, people want what they can't have. So they'll pay a lot more money for the person who is hard to get and has the celebrity positioning. It's as simple as that, my friends. Mm. Good stuff, Dan. So what do you have coming up for us next time? I'm going to talk about this new, quote unquote, gig economy that some people, especially millennials, are touting as just a great thing. Mm, I'm not so sure. All right. Looking forward to that. So thank you, Canine Crew, for tuning in. Thank you, Doberman Dan, for telling us how we can command higher prices and be more desirable. We'll be back in your earbuds next time. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to create rivers of revenue from your existing customers, then the next thing you need to do is go to DobermanDan.com. He's given away a free copy of his $98 per month Doberman Dan letter just for listening to the show. Go to DobermanDan.com now and sign up for your free issue. This is the podcastfactory.com.